Hi. To be guest storyteller, you get to uh, prepare a story and deliver it to a huge crowd and be judged, but there is no possibility of winning. So that's, that's quite an honor. And I'm a, an art teacher by day, and one of the most monotonous parts of uh, being an art teacher is mounting student work. And for the layman, that means putting glue on their work and pushing it down into a larger rectangle of construction paper so it gives the illusion of being framed. So, and you did hundreds, dozens, hundreds, maybe thousands now in my career. And to break up monotony, I would, for many years, draw pictures with the glue on the back of their artwork. So countless numbers of my former students own my work sandwiched forever between a piece of construction paper and their work. And I did it for years, for three years maybe, until it finally dawned on me. And I liked it, and I enjoyed it, and I was kind of proud of some of the imagery. And then three years into it, I thought, you know, I should just replace the glue with paint and do it on paper. So I did that, and uh, after three years of practice, and no dipping and no drag, and just really being able to move my hand as fast as I could over the surface area, I could paint really, really fast that way. So a hundred in a day, sometimes, I would have these paintings. And like most of my creative endeavors, the supply was much greater than the, the demand. So, <laughs> much greater. So I gave some away to friends and family, and I sold some. And then, I, then stacks began to like, grow and build around me in my, in my small dwelling. And I got the idea that I'm just going to start hanging these all around the city for people. And, uh, and that's what I did. So I began like putting them on trees and uh, on cars and abandoned buildings for people to find. And then uh, for me, another part of the experience was like perching myself and just kind of watching people encounter them. And they would, uh, they would walk up and they would like, look at an abandoned building full of paintings and like, look around. Like it was some kind of setup or a trap, like a net was going to fall down on top of them. And uh, so I really enjoyed it. And then like the stacks dwindled, and then I began making more, and then putting more out there, and making more. And it became this process that I didn't think much about, but it was very normal, I was very compulsive about it. And people would begin asking, like, what are you doing? Why are you doing that? You're, I wasn't making money. There was no long-lasting impact like a graffiti artist. I wasn't tagging. And, uh, and I struggled with it. I could really not answer them. Even people catching me in the act, like, what are you doing? And I'd be like, oh, I'm doing it. <laughs> you know, decorating this, you know, or I'm putting this here. And I, and I started asking myself that question, like, well, am I an artist or a performance artist or a, a lawyer or an exhibitionist or a litterer? You know, which was, I think, a big part of it. And uh, so one day, I was perched across a little display that I made. There are a couple pieces there. And every time I would do it in the past, someone would, like, look and think and look at it and examine it. And this guy kind of walked by. There was a very flamboyant guy on South Street. And I don't mean that in a bad way, I mean that in like a fabulous way. And he was walking down South Street with a bunch of coffees, maybe six. And he just walked, and then he, he, and he encountered my work, but didn't even really turn his head. Just like kind of walked and just, just grabbed him. Didn't even break stride. Just kept walking, and just kept walking. And I thought, this is my arch enemy. This is, I'm putting work up, and as fast as I can put it up, this guy, without even breaking stride with six other coffees in his hand, so I did the only reasonable thing. I followed him. Yeah. <laughs> I followed him, and uh, he went to a shoe store, which I realized after he entered that he worked where he worked. And uh, and to my surprise, though, he walked in and he was like very celebratory. He said, "Oh, I found three more. I'm gonna hang them in the back." Whoa. And then it dawned on me that this is not my enemy. This is my this is my biggest collector. This is my perhaps largest fan and a big collector. So he came back out, and I said. I couldn't help but overhear him, but what did you bring in here? What is that? And he proceeded to explain me to me about, oh, there's this local guy who puts his artwork everywhere for people to find, and you know, he had a pretty clear picture as to what I was doing and why. And I actually said, well, why do you think he would do that? And I was anxious for this answer. And I said, well, why, why would he do that? And he said, well, I think he just wants to share his work. And I think he desperately needs attention. <laughs> And it would be tough to argue at that point, on stage with a microphone. <laughs> but I said, oh! And I just kind of wandered out. And uh, I, I would assume, if he told the story, to hear it from his perspective is that he got procured free art. But when I tell the story, I, I had a one very insightful therapy session, and I paid an art. Thank you. Yeah.